This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll be talking about count bubbles. Count bubbles are the little numbers on the right-hand side of things, or on the icons of things, that indicate how many unread messages there are or something like that. We're going to be creating one for emails, texts, and friends. We'll be using countbubbles.html. That's inside of your working files folder. In order to add the count bubbles, all we need to do is add a span inside of the anchor tag. And we have to give that span a class of UI li count. That tells jQuery mobile that the span indicates how many unread or how many whatevers inside of the element that there are. So if I say 12 here, and I save that and go over here and refresh, now you can see that little 12 unread emails. Now it doesn't have to be unread emails, it could be the number of items that are inside of something. It's completely up to what your design implies. Here, because we have emails, texts, and friends, the user is probably going to assume that this number represents the number of unread emails, unread texts, and new friends that we have. So I'll just go ahead and round this example out by simply copying and pasting. Let's give ourselves seven new text messages and two new friends. And here we go. That's how we can add count bubbles to our document. Now, if you want to format these in a more unique way, you have a couple different options. One of your options, of course, is to take a look at the actual element and format it yourself. So here's our span. You can see jQuery Mobile has given it a couple of different other classes. In our case, if we want to style all of these things, let's say in a red color, what we'll probably want to do is target that class UI LI count. So I'm going to close this and I'll go back to my example here. Up at the top, I'm going to add a style tag. And inside of there, I'll say dot UI LI count. And inside I'll say background color. And I'll make it a red color. Now I don't want to make it a really, really strong red color. So I'll just choose C44. That's a lot of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. Save that, we'll refresh. And it looks like that didn't quite work. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual element and figure out why. If you do end up styling things manually using jQuery mobile, a lot of it has to do with trying something, if it doesn't work, taking a look in the web inspector and trying to figure out why it didn't work. So here we have our element. Here's our background color. And for some reason that isn't working. And if you scroll down, you can see why. Here, the background is set to EEE, -E -E, and that is a particular rule that jQuery Mobile has added, UI button up C. That's gonna be for all of the different buttons. Now you wanna override this rule. The reason that our red background color style is not overriding this light gray background style is because here we're specifying background color. And here we're specifying background. So that means what we'll have to do is change our rule so we're specifying the same property. Now the rule that we're overriding is actually inside of this line here. This CSS file has that line of code. Now because we're specifying ours below that link tag, so long as the specificity is the same, our rule will win. So let's hop back over here, refresh, and sure enough, now we have a red color. Now we could do a little bit more styling if we wanted to. We could say color is going to be white, and we'll give it a text shadow, and we'll make it black. And we're going to make it 0x offset, 0y offset, and let's say 3 pixels blur. Go back over here. Now we have a nice subtle drop shadow effect in here. 
So that's one way that you can customize these elements. That's actually perhaps your best way of customizing these elements. In addition, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and specify this change to only happen within a certain list view. For example, you could say UL class equals, and you could give it a class such as info bar. And now up at the top, you can say dot info bar dot UI li count. And that'll only affect things that have a class of UI li count that are inside of this info bar element. That means these will be read, but if you have these elements somewhere else in your document, they won't be read over there. They'll only be read in this particular situation. So that's how we can add count bubbles and how we can add custom CSS as well to make them pop out from our design.